Shut up and sit down. Stop what you're doing, Weekend Warriors, and get to listening because the Weekendology podcast is back again with another episode. We're the only podcast with the hottest takes, the best talking points, and the stories to fuel your weekend conversations. Will Dichley is back alongside in the driver's seat with my co-pilot, Aaron Berg. Aaron, what's going on today? I am chilling. Hey, I since we're back with a sports episode, I have a question for you. Oh, and you're yeah. a soccer guy, so starting it off big. Then yeah, here we go yeah. right well, into it. I'm going all uh, firing all cylinders here. Do you know Peter Chech? C E C H. Peter Chech, yeah, Chech, he was yeah. the Chelsea goalkeeper for uh, like a really long time, and I think I already know what you're going to ask. But go ahead. Oh wow. Oh uh, okay. yeah. What, what am I going to ask? He's going to make his pro hockey league debut. Look at that. You yeah. know more than I do. See, Jeez, man, I, I could just see the future. <laughs> I'm way ahead of you. I, I just saw. That I about saw it. that, and I thought of you, and I thought of our episode because we're back <laughs> doing sports finally. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I got to ask Will about this. But I was going to say, hey, props to that man. That is awesome. I know nothing about soccer, so I don't know who he is. But I would love really to see the, the footage from him because he was one of the best goalkeepers of all time. But is, is, so is he's he like, like six foot seven, two wow. or six foot eight. Like he's super tall. And I don't know how he's going to do in hockey, but I didn't even know he was doing hockey. Yeah. I mean, well, Ben Bishop's like six, seven. So wow. there's big goalies out there. Yeah, I mean, that's true. I don't think it matters as much in hockey because there's small goalies, you know, Martin Broder and guys like yeah. that who are still good. So, but yeah, that was interesting. That's, that's pretty cool. I, I think we should, uh, should start seeing that more often guys, you know, Hey, why not? You know, you're done with your athletic career, you know, but I mean, look at guys like Deion Sanders or Bo Jackson or Kyler Murray. I mean, why not? He should do that. And yeah, yeah. football career. That's Fun to a, play baseball. I just thought that was kind of a cool thing to, to go back into. No, I thought it was episode. pretty interesting too. And I saw that. I was like, huh, well, I didn't know he was going for hockey, but Hey, if, if he played it all his life, I guess, I guess so. He's I, from no, uh, the Czech Republic. So I must, he must've just probably just done it in the off season for yeah. conditioning or something. <laughs> well, but, it's freezing there. So well, that's true. Maybe something in the winter. Yeah. Is he, is he better than Tim Howard? Or? Oh yeah. He's much better. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he played on the top. That's my extent of for, knowledge. Tim uh, he played on Chelsea, uh, which is in London, one of the top teams there, and he played on Arsenal for a while, and he was the top goalkeeper in the Czech Republic national team for, he must have played for like 20 years or something, at least huh. 18 seasons, so he just retired this past year, this year, so he is really good. Yeah, excellent stuff. Crazy. Um, but we are back with another episode. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining us again. We're at episode eight now. Uh, a full eight episodes, and I gotta just say it's been so much fun creating all these podcasts uh, to kind of bring our conversations and kind of our you know debates to life and kind of flesh it out, and hopefully it gets uh, some debate topics going for uh, for the weekend because. Uh, everybody needs something to talk about while they're sipping mimosas at Sunday brunch or, I don't know, grabbing some drinks uh, on Saturday night. So. Squad brunch. Squad brunch. Uh, yeah, that's cool. We got past number yeah. s- the big number seven. Yeah, the that's big number seven was huge. the milestone, so uh, we're, we're pushing we still haven't on quit. forward. Yeah. Um, and the last few episodes have been really, really fun to record as well. Uh, we've had some good guests on. Uh, Kaylee Wolf from We Are Rivals uh, has been uh, a great guest uh, just, from the just last rivals episode. Just Rivals now. Oh, just rivals yeah. now. They're changing it's their old name. school. They used yeah. to be we are rivals. <laughs> They're chasing their na- or changing their name back and forth. But if you haven't heard that, uh, we talk with Kaylee Wolf about the rise of their band. Uh, we talk about uh, how women in music are breaking in and uh, some upcoming projects that they had. So go check it out. The link will be in the description below. Um, but as Aaron said, we're we're back into the realm of sports for this week, and uh, we've we've got a kind of an interesting topic here. I uh, something that's been kind of floated around here and there, uh, back and forth. And as you know, I'm a I'm a huge soccer fan, and uh, we're talking about how the promotion and relegation system and how that would translate over to American sports and if that would work and, you know, so on and so forth. So I'm excited to get this one uh, going because I think it could definitely be a great improvement for the American sports, like revamping the playoff system, uh, making sure that it's a little bit more competitive. Aaron, you're going to probably take the opposite side. (laughs) Well, so I will and I won't. So okay. I'll, yeah. Well, um, he'll play um, half devils out to get that. Yeah, because I, I was thinking about it, and Will and I talked about it before the show, and 
as a fan, it's awesome. And I'll, I'll just kick it off by, by starting that and you can, uh, yeah. you can, you can let me know what you think, but as a fan, I'm all for it. Like it's, it's cool. And especially, and you'll probably you know, bring up this point since you're a fan of it, the NBA could use it because the tanking is a huge issue. It seems like every year they're trying to make some kind of rule to mm-hmm. prevent it, but they just can't do it. Whether teams admit it or not, they tank. Like they, right. they do, and I get the strategy. But as a fan, it's really boring to see, especially when it's January and you can tell teams are tanking. It's like, okay, why would I even yeah. watch the rest of this? So I think it's great. It would really make things competitive. So as a fan, I'm all for it. I think there's so many logistical challenges though that you need to look into um but as just a you know a couch kind of you know what do they call those armchair quarterback Ar- or yeah couch, yeah couch quarterback or something yeah like a yeah armchair quarterback i guess yeah. is the the term like as a guy like that you know just sitting at a bar yelling at the tv and you yeah. know acting like i could do the same thing when i haven't played in 10 well, years and i didn't play that <laughs> level you know like whenever you, i hear that term armchair quarterback or like couch coach or something i just think of the cleveland browns for some reason like <laughs> oh, it's just like imagery we're that gonna just bring in some cleveland head. browns oh, talk the cleveland browns are it's, gonna be it's coming but, but uh, i don't know why it's just comes and just like oh armchair probably, quarterback, cleveland browns probably because like their team has been so bad for so long and the fans are so passionate yeah. and that they're just like the typical like oh come on you know like didn't those they have guys. somebody like, named what was it Doug Couch or Tim, Tim Couch? Tim Couch, yeah. yeah. That's my boy. All right, maybe that's why I think of yeah, him then every time I hear Tim Couch. Couch he's, care. Hey, he's a bust, but <laughs> hey, people still talk about him, yeah. so hey, you know, he, right. he did his job somewhat. Exactly, but if, for, for people who don't know uh, what the promotion and relegation system is, so it's used in European soccer, and essentially it's uh, there's different tiers in, in soccer as well. There is the Premier League, uh, which is the top tier. There's the Championship, which like is the second that. tier. Premier. Premier League. Sound very British. Well, uh, Premier. I am half British, so <laughs> actually not really, but I like to think that I am. Um, <laughs> but there's there's about three or four major divisions, uh, and in each year, teams battle for promotion and relegation. So the top three get promoted up to the, the upper league, and then the bottom three get relegated to the bottom uh, to the bottom league. Then, so it kind of gives you one a better storyline and um the stakes are a whole lot higher so i, um, I have a question for that because i don't i don't know soccer at all i'll admit it let um, me uh, let me educate you <laughs> <laughs> you gonna learn today um so when they <laughs> <laughs> let me hit you with some knowledge <laughs> <laughs> when when they uh do that do they do it for the other the league does the league below them do it too? Yeah. So okay, so it's a trickle down. Do. Yeah. Well, what happens at the lowest level? Do they just kick them out of the league? No, so then they just stay at the bottom three for however long that they're there. So, so does that bottom league get bigger and bigger? Or No, so or it's, always three it's up usually down. capped at around 20, 25 teams per league. Uh, and then if you're at the fourth tier division, which is basically just playing like minor leagues or whatever, like really bottom tier, basement level, if you're in the bottom three for that league, you'll just stay there and you'll stay in that, that league until the next year if you get promoted up. But they're always going to promote three up and always yeah. going to demote so okay. always, yeah. so it even always do that. Okay. So it's uh, one, it's so much more exciting uh, to to watch the, the, the teams throughout the entire year because one, it ensures the best team wins. There's no, uh, I guess there's no there's usually not a Cinderella story or there's usually not uh, a team to come out of nowhere to win. Usually it's the best team wins and you're rewarded from that. So uh, it gives you the chance to really say, okay, okay, these are, these teams are kicking ass and, you know, Chelsea, Manchester United, United, Manchester City, Liverpool. I mean, those are always going to be, you know, teams that are going to be succeeding, but the storyline really kind of goes to Newcastle or Southampton or even Leicester City as well. I mean, you know, back in 2015-16, Leicester won the league, and that was like a 5,000 to 1 odds of them winning. So there is occasion that, you know, the Cinderella story comes, but it's just as exciting for them to watch them if they're going to get promoted or relegated than it is to watch who wins the championship. So yeah. um, so that that's essentially what it is, and uh, like I said, it's it adds to more excitement. Um, the stakes are so much higher, like I said. So think of... Think of like you know, Patriots are your favorite team for for football. Um, co-favorite, co-favorite. What's your other favorite? Broncos. Oh, that's right. All right, so just let's just let's just imagine that the, <laughs> I know it makes a lot of sense. Two AFC are, teams uh, are are battling out for 
um, for for promotion or relegation. Then, so they're they're trying to get promoted up, which and, they were in the '90s. Like, yeah, everyone loves to rip on me. And, oh, you're just bandwagon, right? Man, come on. They used to be terrible until Tom Brady. And I saw the game Tom That's Brady true. came in, so I'm going to defend myself here, right, right here, right now, because I know all you people are going to be like, oh, Cats fan, look at this guy. Like, like, Typical Tom Brady fan. No, I'm a Patriots fan. And I love Tom Brady, but I'm a full Patriots fan. Ben Coates, baby. Oh, wow. Kicking it back. See, oh, that's old Terry right Glenn. There. Yeah. Drew Bledsoe. But, yeah, no, like, I'm just going to say, you know, they, they used to be bad. So. No, that's For you youngsters who think they've always been good. No, yeah. no, no. But imagine the Patriots struggling or, you know, battling out for, for promotion. Uh, you know, they, they go up against, you know, the Dolphins for uh, last game of the season. So if they win, they make it up to promotion to the next league. If they lose, then they stay in the league that they're at now. Yeah. Well, when I mentioned the stakes, uh, when I was watching this documentary, it's uh, it's on Netflix. It's called We Are Southampton. Mm. And there it chronicles their um, rise up through the ranks into the Premier League. And when they got promoted... Uh, the difference in prize money and sponsorship and broadcast rights or revenue was like a hundred million dollars. Mm-hmm. So imagine the Patriots, you know, losing to the Dolphins. The Dolphins make it up to the next league to the to that upper echelon. Right. The Patriots lose out on fifty million, sixty million, seventy million dollars that they could have won. Right. And the Dolphins are now like in the next league, you know, and they, they then they become good. They sign some great players and then they go on to I don't know, succeeding and, and winning then. But, can, but um, can't that happen in sports already? I mean, that does happen. The Warriors did that. It can. They, they I mean, when they built their dynasty, another team, terrible history. You go back at the Warriors history, I mean, recent history, let's, you know, 90s up, man, they were awful. And they had good players too, but it wasn't until they got Curry, and even a couple years after Curry, once he got healthy, that they got good and they, they started, they drafted well. So, I mean, you're already seeing that. You know, I, yeah, you you are, I think, to to a certain extent, but really the promotion relegation system would be to kind of deter some of the problems that you talked about earlier. So, a big thing in the NBA is um, load management. So yeah, what what happens favorite. Uh, is listen to the, episode one and we get into yeah, that too. If you the, want more, the teams will go management. on and they will uh, rest players uh, every what four or five games or six games or something just because you know their load management. Uh, is is tired. being associated? Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're they're too tired. They hurt. Um, yeah. So, you know, what what if you're like going to a game and you're like, okay, I'm gonna go see LeBron James or James Harden <laughs> or something. You know, you spend two hundred and fifty dollars on a ticket. This like, is exactly what we talked about exactly. in the first episode. Yeah, I'm just rehashing <laughs> old stuff. But like, but it's a problem though because like no, you want to go and see yeah. you know the best players and they're like, oh, they're rested because of load management. Yeah, you're not even or, watching the team yeah. anymore in some cases. Or they're rested because they're just the team's trying to tank for the rest of the season. Right. And uh, they're trying to get the number one draft pick. Like. The way that the sports system in America is set up now, uh, I don't like how they reward mediocrity or rewarding like bad play on purpose because it happens. Like, I, it I, happens. I, w- I wouldn't call it rewarding though. I, I mean, you're getting the first round draft picks. You're getting the best. Well, player like, in let, the draft let, so the year. well, so that's it, a reward. It I depends what what league you're talking about. I would say in the NBA, I wouldn't call it a reward because we've seen. Well, yeah, like they the have Cavs the get the first pick, them, and yeah. they had like a 1% chance no. to get it before. So, to me, I've heard people say that, and I right. think, like, let's stick with the NBA first, and then I'll go on to the other leagues. But the NBA, I wouldn't call that a reward because there's still – I don't know, the lottery sometimes <laughs> kind of looks rigged. Um, but, you know, just going off the facts, what they tell us, it's, it wouldn't be a reward because you're not guaranteed – to get the first pick if you're the worst team. That's you know, true, you can, yeah. you, you're guaranteed, I think it's to get the top three, I think. But still, I mean, if you got the third pick, that's a huge difference in some cases. So I do agree with the lottery in, in some sense because you're just going to keep these teams at the bottom then. And then how are they supposed to get better? But you know, I go back to the Warriors. They were awful. Then they if, – if you didn't have the lottery and they had the, what, seventh pick, I think, when they got Curry. I mean, that's not a, a fantastic pick. But they were pretty bad. If if they wouldn't have got that pick, they would have still probably be where they were. You know, eighth seed, barely getting in, probably missing the playoffs most of the time. So like, you'd miss out on that dynasty. And they changed the league. I'm yeah. not a warrior fan no, or anything, that's true. but but you look at that and like, if you take that away, you know, 
and say, okay, we're going to throw them in the in the G League. I mean, you could potentially they could have missed out on that. So well, I think that's, that's a true, huge. Yeah. A huge concern. But, like, look at teams like the Browns, you know? We're bringing up the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. Uh, the oh, team, I have a point about them, too. But yeah, The team ahead. literally had a parade for going 0-16. Yeah. Well, that was like, a joke. A momentous. But still. It wasn't. Like, like, come on. I, I've heard people say that, but, like, that was funny. It was It was basically them being like, ha-ha, yeah, we know we suck. Like, that besides wasn't. Besides that, they've, uh, they're continually mediocre. Or me- <laughs> mediocre. Like your English? Uh, exactly. Yes. But you're British. I am British. I don't <laughs> Me. proper english um yeah you know, they're continually mediocre and they're continually bad but like why <laughs> like you know they're perpetually just okay or bad yeah so if you have if they're demoted down into the league below okay but wait wait reward but, a team that should you know would make more excitement or make the league more money like what they care about or bring more fans in or something so you like just that. opened up I'll, I'll get to the browns in a second but that's another thing that i, I was wondering about NFL, how do you do that? They don't have a minor league. They don't even have um, NFL Europe anymore, which they kind of used to use. But, like, you could say XFL, but that hasn't started yet. So we'll see if that lasts longer than the, the AAF. But, you know, and they have the CFL. But, like, they don't have a yeah. true, you know, it's not baseball or hockey where you can send a team down that's affiliated. So how do you so do that? I guess that would be kind of one of the the issues. So I, I would say promotion relegation is possible throughout the American League. But – they would have to overhaul the system a lot and they would have to essentially expand the league or you could have different subdivisions or sub leagues within the NFL. So you could just expand the league to, I don't know, this, like the XFL have their teams, uh, like in have the that. XFL match up with yeah, the affiliates. And have the XFL be an affiliated thing with the NFL. So well, that that's way what they want. The, they're Roger not, Goodell would never let yeah, that happen. That way they're not cannibalizing themselves. You could do it same for the, the CFL. Uh, you could do it for no, the No, they same, have different rules. Um, <laughs> well, there's gotta be a The XFL together. has different rules too. So well. it would take, so I, I have an idea for that, but with the XFL and CFL, you'd have to get, someone to agree with Roger Goodell and that's impossible because well, he just yeah. loves power and he's terrible. <laughs> so he, he's the worst. He's, uh, he's, he's a he's, dictator. First of all, I'll go off on a tangent here. He's an idiot because they, Whoa, fire throw. Uh, this is nothing new. I'm I, like, everyone, <laughs> if, if you say he's smart or like, you're an idiot. Like he's, he sucks. He's so bad. But like, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> tell us how you really feel, Aaron. So much rage. So much rage. <laughs> um, I just want to rage right now, <laughs> but he, he would need to let them and he should, there should be a minor league for the NFL. Like it would make total sense and all the other sports have it and it works. And the NFL to me would they'd make more money if they had right. teams affiliated with them. But anyway, we could do that in another episode. That's a good topic. That's a right future there. topic. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but no, what, what I think they could do is cut it in half. There's, what 32 nfl teams yeah 32 that's 16 teams that's still plenty right i mean they had heck they had around 16 teams back in what the 70s like you know the 60s 70s so like they've done it so they should to me i don't know if they should but like they could do that where they cut it in half we got you know nfl a and nfl b and and you want to stay in with the big dogs and either like even now you could pick out the teams patriots right um you know, Rams, um, Seahawks, 49ers are four. Yeah, 49ers right now. now, you know, uh, just do whatever. You, the, Colts the best, yeah, 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 the best teams. And then you got like the total scrubs, the Dolphins and Browns um, and Browns, sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. And just these uh, Bucks, you know, these awful teams. So, you know, I don't think that would be hard to do. And then, then you do your relegation. Yeah, so that yeah. way it kind of, makes up for the lack of what other leagues have where they have true minor league systems. Well, that's what, uh, the other leagues are set up for it. That, so. Yeah, I agree. I, that's what the um, Spanish League for Soccer does, actually. So yeah. they have, it's called La Liga. They have La Liga A, like first division, premier yeah. division, and then they have La Liga B. So essentially it's still 20 teams in each of the leagues, but it's still associated, it's still La Liga 1 and La Liga 2. So mm-hmm. you could just have NFL premier division and then NFL like second division, like you said, mm-hmm. still branded and still they're still making money and everything. I'm sure people are still going to come to football games regardless oh, of yeah. who it is. Um, people go to, I mean, look at the AAF. Right. It, it, 
started and people were like, oh, I'm yeah. into this right away. So, so if you have that, and even if you if you expand the XFL, have the same rules or the same for the CFL or something, you know, you, it gives you a better pool of, of teams to, to and players to draw from. But also it prevents stagnation from a lot of the teams here. And when you get relegated, that's despair for your entire city. And yeah. if you get promoted, that's just pure ecstasy. So here's there's a huge point in why I was wanted to bring up Cleveland Browns. Look at Cleveland. If you, I mean, Cleveland, I know it's a sports town, quote unquote. It's a Browns town. They're their number one team. I mean, I don't have the numbers in front of me how much they make, but people love the Browns. You can just see it when I don't you watch know why. a game. Like, but it's, it's just it's, Cleveland. <laughs> I, yeah, but it, well, it's Cleveland. <laughs> they it's they Cleveland. need something to watch. Guess, but, but no, but I mean, their their fans are rabid, and it doesn't even matter how bad they are over and over and over again. The so fans they wouldn't show care up if they're they, in the second division then. They'll no, still show no, they up. no, they would because well, not necessarily care or not care. The economy would just tank. The Browns, well, that's true, yeah, and that's the thing. That's where I think it's dangerous. Where the Browns are the number one example of that. You have this team where it doesn't really ma- sports are a business now. Like oh, competitiveness yeah. is great and whatever, but we see. Look at the Tampa Bay Rays. They're competitive. People still don't show up. Some cities, it just doesn't matter if you're good or not. Like people don't necessarily care. They just go into the brand or they don't care about the brand. Los Angeles Rams. Same thing. They move sure. to LA. People don't show up. So the Browns, like if they get relegated, the fans will still go, but the economy would just, it, it would tank. They lose so I mean, you've, in the example you brought up, they went from a hundred million yeah, to like, like 40 million, hundred million in, in revenue for like, sponsorships I, I mean the, or the city of rates. Cleveland already, and there's several cities like this, but Cleveland already has economic problems. I mean, that's dangerous to, to do to an economy for the fact of, oh, we want to watch something fun on TV. Well, that's true, I guess. But I mean, I, I think that's a that's a real thing that makes it tough to, yeah, to bring. Which <laughs> is uh, interesting because it, I was thinking about so basically this, you want to destroy Cleveland. Everything <laughs> outside of everything outside of London is kind of depressing. Um, like in Southampton, or if you go to like Slough or Liverpool, even it's, it's basically Cleveland. I mean, <laughs> it's bad weather. Much, yeah, <laughs> there's not a whole uh, lot to do but watch. Southampton's sports. nice though. It's on the like the coast. And no, we, 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 when we went to Manchester, I kind of thought of that. It, it was yeah. kind of like uh, it was very industrial, dumpy. You know, not kinda, great weather. Yeah. yeah, they don't have TVs in their bars. Nope. They don't even stay open past like ten o'clock or something. Too, <laughs> we were trying to watch the Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather fight a couple years back, and we're running through. That the, was trying so to find the bars. We had and, to run through a gay pride yeah. parade. Well, <laughs> <laughs> not, not that that's a bad thing, but it was yeah. just like it was interesting. Like the there was some interesting folk that were around. <laughs> we had an interesting like way around the city. <laughs> we're walking around like where can we watch this fight? And it's like. 2 a.m. or something because like, it starts at like 8 o'clock stateside and it's a six hour difference or something and everyone's closed they're like closed at 10 30 and we're like well we guess we'll just go home and we'll, we walked try and stream all it and, over yeah like, we watched like three miles or something oh and couldn't God. find it but anyway um so yeah i guess it would be kind of an economic disaster for them but i mean if people still gonna come to the games and they're still gonna drive revenue for ticket sales then I would say that that's kind of where they make their money off of, um, apart from some because they're still going to have sponsorship rights. It's just that you don't get that elite package that you get with. The yeah, but that's top a ton of money you're losing. Well, I don't know. That's just one extreme example. Other leagues and the NFL could set it up where it's just you know a marginal difference. Uh, you know, it could might might not even be a, it's as extreme as that. But so how um, does how does when when they relegate? I mean, does that crush those economies? Um. So it definitely hurts the team. I mean, I know it, um, yeah, I know it hurts the economy because yeah. you throw out the numbers. But I mean, I guess do you know like? So when is that really bad for the city and they just really suffer? Because I could imagine if it were that bad, they wouldn't do it because right. like, hey, this is killing our cities. It but. depends on the city and how much the support is for the team. So when uh, when Wolverhampton was relegated a couple years back, they were actually just promoted up this year. Uh, they have a really good fan base. Uh, their team, their fans turn out for the games in, in droves, so there's really no issue of uh, attendance. But there was uh, problems with kind of some of the revenue that they didn't have enough money to pay some of the players. So a lot of the times when you get relegated, you're not going to have the elite draw factor of being in that top tier league. So mm-hmm. players will opt out of their contracts. They're like, okay, I'm, I'm getting out of here. Sometimes the teams will be forced to sell. Yeah, I think um, that's a, that's a huge issue to get. But around. 
it forces the team and the organization to restructure and make smarter decisions. So what Wolverhampton had to do was they had to turn their philosophy of bringing in players on their head, focus more on their youth academy, and make smarter investments in their players and their signings. And then I don't know, four or five years later, they're back up in the Premier League because they built up a good system, and now they're actually pretty decent. I mean, they just beat Manchester City last weekend, which is like one of the world's best teams. So it might be a short-term sacrifice, but you could be setting your team up for a long-term success. Uh, a lot of the times in, in the league, Leicester City was an example. They were in like third division like 10 years ago or f- seven years ago or something. They went on to win the Premier League in 2015-16, and they're continually getting better. And like They're a small market team too, so they're, they're still drawing in good players. They're making smart decisions with their finances and their, and their contracts. And they're investing in, in in smart decisions. So if the Browns go down for four years and they come back up, they could be top of the league. And you know, for three years in a row, they could win the Super Bowl or something, or <laughs> the, they could win the league. I don't know. So well, they can't because they have Baker. Well, yeah, Baker sucks. But <laughs> oh, sorry, Aaron. I know how much you love Baker. I Mayfield. am so sick of all you people <laughs> ripping on Baker Mayfield. He's done nothing wrong. Right. I mean, the guy has a bad game, and people are just in love with it. They're like, oh, yes, he failed. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> like, he's turning around the Cleveland Browns. Give the guy a break. I mean, yeah, I don't see it. Geez. It's still Cleveland. He's so. already done it. No. He's turned it around. Yeah. What are they, like two and three or something now? Uh, I don't mediocre. Know. That's, that's <laughs> They're mediocre. Mediocre? <laughs> mediocre. <laughs> so, I, so that's that's how I see it, it being as, as plausible within – the American system. Cause when you talk about like the NHL and the MLB is already pretty much set up to have that happen. It already kind of does happen with the NHL and AHL and then ECHL as well. Cause didn't you say like one of the ECHL teams? Just yeah. The, became... the Colorado Eagles were an ECHL team and then they, they moved up to right. the AHL and in, in a way like the, the brand did. Um, so I'm sure the they players probably, did it. Yeah. I mean, but the, the, the brand of the Colorado Eagles did, Right. Which well, you know, which was big for the, the team, the brand. Um, so yeah, I mean, it it could. Another thing that comes to mind though, for me is if you do it. First of all, you have. I mean, you, you have the top what or the bottom three teams going down. Yeah. Wouldn't they? They would have the number one pick though, right? Like, wouldn't so, they draft the top college athlete? Yeah. So how? Like That's let's say let's say the to... Browns get the number one pick, right? So then they they go down and then they pick my boy Baker. I mean, then they're in the minors. So to me that that's that's really crappy for him because it's like, oh great, I worked so hard to get to the pros essentially, and then you know I have the majors I should say, and then oh here I get to start in the minors and have even more of an uphill battle. Whereas if they're in the NFL. And, you know, they stay in the NFL like it is now, and they draft him. He's got that shot. Because otherwise, I think you're going to see guys be like, nope, I'm staying in college. Right. Like, you're, it's going to create – it. our system right now, it would have to be such an overhaul because we essentially are using – you know, basketball, football most – are using the NCAA as a minor league pretty much. Oh yeah. So like, you have guys, I mean that, that, and it's like, Hey, congratulations on being the number one college player. And you're amazing. You get to start in the minors and it's kind of like baseball, you know, where it's like, Hey, prove it more, prove it more. And I, I just think, especially for something like the NFL, it's so hard on your body that it would that, be tough. Yeah. That's really hard to come in and you're like, okay, now it's like baseball, like prove it again. And you're banging up your body. Then by the time they actually get to the NFL, they're not maybe the team won't be as competitive because they're you know they have a three-year right career under them and they're all banged up you're not seeing the best product whereas now you get that translation of okay we saw this guy play in college he's a stud we get to have him pick up no, where I, he left off. I agree like i think the ncaa and a lot of the other leagues are very much developmental leagues for the pros, obviously. So you'd probably have to shake up how the draft system works because there is no draft in European soccer. Everybody's signed or sold based on a transfer fee. So there's no yeah. draft. You would have, where, I would think you would yeah. have to do that. Yeah. yeah. You would almost have to change how players are Which signed. is drafted in itself. That's a huge moneymaker, both for um, the teams and the city that they yeah. hold it in. I mean, look, there was millions of people in Nashville oh, yeah. 
at the NFL draft. It was mind blowing seeing all those people in the streets. I mean, the draft alone is a business. Yeah, it's, so that's that's true. I so think that's a huge thing. You'd I don't have to think do the NFL of. would ever adapt adopt that because they're too much of a money making league. So I, did, did I, I convince could, you they shouldn't? Um, <laughs> for the NFL, probably just because there's not enough support uh, or cohesiveness behind it to to make it happen. I would say yeah. it's it's certainly possible for the NBA because the NBA is a more of a, a global game. Then, but same thing. You have that issue. What if LeBron was in the G League? Well, you wouldn't want to see that. I mean, and look at what he did for Cleveland economically. That's true. Yeah, like he. I mean, he flipped that upside down, and like they, they. I mean, historic numbers economically for what one player did. But most likely, LeBron wouldn't be on the team once they get relegated. He would probably opt out and go to a, a, a bigger team, and that's what usually happens when a team gets relegated and their star player. Uh, goes down. They but just in that sense, then they just leave. That he doesn't get to play in his hometown team. Well, he never really wanted to play in his hometown team. I mean, he didn't want to. I think he just wanted to win a championship. He's like, okay, I'm out of here now. So I mean, that's basically what he did when he left for. for yeah, LA. but uh, I mean, he played there eight years. I don't think he had any have any qualms of leaving the team. I think he got. No, I think Australia. then he just got. I think he wanted to play for his hometown team. Well, then I think he just got fed up, and he's like, "Hey, you're putting scrubs around me. Like, I need to go win." Then and it, it his might buddies be are in Miami. More of a motivation then for him to like, okay, I got a challenge on my book here. I got to get. Oh, this he doesn't team. want a challenge. Well, then he would have left. <laughs> he went to the Heat. He doesn't. <laughs> well, want there a challenge. you go. You're pretty, he went you back to the Cavs point. when they were good. <laughs> yeah. So if if you, if they go down, he doesn't want the challenge, and he'll leave. And if he does, then he'll say, "Okay, I'm going to get this team back up to the Premier. I just or think to that the top. Flight. I just think. I mean." It, like I said, as a fan, that that would be cool to see. It'd be kind of a cool storyline. But I also think, as a fan, it, it kind of sucks because then it's like, well, I don't like Zion. Same thing. It's like it. Like I said, it's like baseball where you got Bryce Harper, you know, players like that. Where Steven Strasburg, you hear about him, you hear about him, you hear about him, and they're just phenoms. And then they go to the minors, and you have to wait a little bit, right? And then they come up, you know. Um, there's or like hockey too, say kind of the the same deal. There's very few Jack Hughes's out there that go from amateur hockey, and then it's like, all right, buddy, you're on the Devils, and you're 18 years old now, go play, you know. So I, I think I think it could work more on baseball and hockey. Yeah, I would not do it for uh, basketball and football. Yeah, I think football. There's there's. Like I think I it said, has to go sport by sport. It yeah. can't just go, hey, American sports let's do this. It like, you have to look at that. And, and to the draft, the draft in hockey has gotten a lot more uh, popular, but baseball draft. Nobody, you, I don't even know what baseball draft goes on sometimes. So it's, it's the most boring thing you'll ever see in your life. It's, it's like 52 rounds oh God. and it's, they do a, I mean, the MLB does such an awful job with like marketing in general, but like, <laughs> it's so funny. Watch that draft. Seriously. Like watch the MLB draft, then watch, any other draft, even the NHL draft, it's night and day. It's so much more exciting at like the, the other NHL leagues. what the NHL does with like yeah. their draft. and But see, and that's the other thing. They that make I, it entertaining. I, well, and they've really done a great job at making it entertaining recently. So I think that's another issue where like they are at the point where they can't get rid of their draft. Right. Because it's a money maker. And they've made it exciting and, and all that. Um, and I think guys are getting, you know, hockey's getting younger. So you're seeing guys get called, even like... Connor McDavid or guys like that. I mean, they're in the minors for a second and then they're they're up. So right. um, I think it's more realistic to do in the NHL, but I really think baseball is the only one you could really get away with. And then maybe hockey, you could try it. Like I could later definitely on see if you it working for hockey. Things. You'd have to have a cohesiveness in terms of the different leagues coming together, maybe forming one kind of like advisory board or some like overarching system where okay this is what we're doing you guys can operate independently because the game the team the, the leagues over in europe they operate essentially independently of you know each other but they just there's an overarching system which is what the fa does the football association so maybe create us an association to oversee all of the leagues just to kind of keep everybody honest like checks and balances and then say okay everybody adheres to this system you can do what you got to do you know within the league itself but top three go up, bottom three go down. Yeah. But I mean, because I think I see basketball is kind of more of the the wheeling and dealing with all the player signings. I mean, the players pretty much have all the power anyway. Yeah. I mean, 
Kawhi is like, I'm going to the Clippers. And <laughs> LeBron's like, I'm going to the Lakers. They just look at where another star goes and they're like, much. oh, I'll follow him. Yeah, and that's very similar to what soccer does too. You know, when Ronaldo goes to Juventus, a lot of the other players are like, I'm going to Juventus. Or, you know, when Sergio Aguero comes to City a long time ago, uh, a lot of the other players come and they're like, we're forming a super team now. So, I mean, they have to have the money to do it, but yeah. a lot of the players in the NBA have the power to pull that off. So if anybody's going to do it, I think it could be NHL and NBA and MLB first and then the NBA kind of slowly adopting it later on. I don't think the NFL could ever do it, though. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I could see that. But what about what about TV contracts? So that that's another thing too, because I don't know how you would disseminate between who gets the top flight contracts and who gets the like well, and the look second at, league. Because then if you do, because um, some TV like stations have certain like broadcast rights for their team. Yeah. So I don't know if they would have to pay more in order to get uh, from like second tier to like the top tier. Or if they would lose money on that if they were relegated as well. Well, I don't look, know how look that at would... like in this situation. I mean, if like a lot of the minor, let's start with baseball because you know, we yeah. agreed that was most realistic. The <laughs> minor league teams are in really rural areas. I mean, That's true. Modesto, California. If they got called up, or uh, you know, Des Moines, Iowa. You know, like these teams. I mean, no one's gonna pay for a TV contract there. They're gonna struggle to get sponsors. And so I think they're, if they got called up, they're going to still be in that tough spot where, okay, how do we get the money? How do we get fans coming out to the games? Maybe you could, you know, play off the fact of, Oh, well there's nothing else here. So, um, you know, well, heck like Oklahoma city when they, when the Hornets came to town during Katrina and they proved basically that basketball could work there. And that's yeah. the thunder moved there. You know, maybe you get that situation, but it, some of those areas are so tiny. You look at hockey, like Reading, Pennsylvania, or uh, Wheeling. You know, like teams like that. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Elmira. You know, like teams that are just in these like barren areas. Um, Prescott, Arizona. Where are you going to get these fans coming from? You know, I just think like that's a huge uphill battle. That great, you got promoted, but there's no industry in these areas. There and they're there for a reason to, to market, you know, to get out further. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're gonna be, have an uphill battle for sponsorship, uphill battle for, battle for TV contracts, uphill battle for players wanting to go there. I mean, heck, people don't even want to go play for like the Utah Jazz because they just don't want to play in Utah. They'd rather go to L.A. Even when the teams are bad, they'll play in L.A. And, and you're seeing uh, the pros, you know. So I yeah. think that's a huge uh, obstacle. That, that I would think happen. the location does does matter because, yeah, like you said, nobody wants to go to Elmira or Reading, Pennsylvania. But a lot of the times, the the same issue relies in some of these deeper teams in England too. I mean, you go over there, and there's like hundreds of teams over there, really, and they're playing in really dumpy parts of England, like industrial, like smog towns, like small Cleveland of England, just really super small, like just not great team or cities. But just to play devil's advocate, you know, let's just say, for instance, a, a fourth tier team gets promoted up to the third tier. Well, they're going to get more promotion uh, with sponsorships. They're probably going to get some better players to come in. Uh, through like they're probably gonna get some better opponents to play against. Then they get promoted to the second tier. Same thing happens. So now they've well, brought if risen, they get promoted, if they get promoted, yeah, but that's the thing. It's hypothetical. They, so then they get up to the top that's tier a league. Perfect and then situation, got, though. Well, yeah, but it's happened before. I mean, that's what happened to Leicester. That's what happened to Wolverhampton. I'm like, oh, these a lot of these Premier League teams were in the bottom tier leagues at some point, and they rose through the ranks. It took a while, yeah, to usurp the you know mega teams of united and city and liverpool and arsenal and all those guys but mm -hmm. they're still able to compete and now they're valued at you know hundreds of millions of dollars or maybe even a billion dollars um and then you get to the point where like um like blackburn is is not a very like great city but you're still getting you know the attraction of oh wow um you know Chelsea or Manchester United are going to come and play. Like, you could do the same, like, oh, the Yankees are coming to play. Um, Aaron Judge is coming to our small town. You know, I want to go and see that. Yeah, I mean, they, they you see that in minor league baseball. And then they start growing, and a lot of the times these smaller teams get new stadiums, and then it's literally like a progression of from rags to riches. Well, I, I think the stadium is another issue, though, because 
if a team gets, you know, demoted or promoted, let's say promoted, that's a better example. I mean, you know, if, uh, heck, the Frisco Rough Riders get promoted, their their stadium holds, what, 12,000? Yeah. I mean, that's going to be a huge issue. And then what are they going to do? Like, spend all that money to revamp it? I mean, that's a huge – that takes years to do. True. I mean, you, we saw that even when uh, the Thunder moved into the Ford Center. That was a huge mess, um, the the former Ford Center. Um, but, yeah, when the Oklahoma City Thunder moved, that was a big deal because they were like, well, this stadium is not equipped. And that wasn't even a minor league stadium. That was just like a – I mean, it was built for basketball, but – it wasn't NBA basketball standards. Right. I think too, the issue is our major leagues are such businesses, especially with the stadium race that's been going on the past 10, 15 years. Stadiums are so intricate. Thanks Jerry Jones for that. Seriously. Yeah. He, he pretty much started. He ruined it all. Dude, it's incredible. You look at, I went to, um, the Arizona coyotes game last April. Yeah. That was built in 2002, 2003 around then. It looks so old. And that it's built I mean fairly recently, early two thousands, you know. Yeah. It's nuts. And it's just like wow, you look at that and you're like, Wow, they have so much. I mean, well the um look the at blues, the, you know, they, they, they the had blues. to revamp. And it's just it's incredible because you have that issue where these expectations are just insane. And I think that, that will play into it where you you promote a team and then it's like, Okay, how do we fit these people in it? They I mean that's not they can't do that. They can't fix that so then they're going to lose money because they can't get the people they need in there or you demote a team and then you're going to end up with this shiny new stadium and it's like well great we wasted all this money and we can't fill the stadium yeah it that so that that is an issue because over in europe and england every stadium usually holds about 15,000 20,000 plus so there's no sh- and there's that's the only sport that they have over there so there's no shortage of fans coming out and supporting the team right so that would be yeah i get that that would be an issue here because you know, if you've got a, a city with four sports teams in it, like, you know, Boston or Chicago or even Cleveland, like, you know, they've got two teams or Nashville. Well, and you could, you could pile up those. I mean, yeah. you know, look at, uh, we're, we're in Dallas. I mean, so we you... have the Rangers, Stars, um, the Cowboys, and the Mavericks. And then let's say the Allen Americans get promoted up a couple and then the Rough Riders get promoted. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, and, yeah. the, well, and then you got soccer too. You got FC Dallas. And then, I mean, geez, it's just, well, let's say the legends go up too. That's like eight, nine teams you got going on. I mean, I mean at, at the major league stadiums. level, it's huge. You could share stadiums. You know, like, you know, I have, that's hard to do though. Have two people, like two owners come together and be like, all right, we're going to do, <laughs> do you hockey. think, do you think Jerry this Jones and Mark Cuban <laughs> would come together and be like, Hey buddy, let's share some revenue. Well, no, they don't need to share, but I'm talking like, like for, for hockey and for, uh, no, like no, they wouldn't basketball do or something. No, Mark Cuban wouldn't do it with anybody. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, because he, they share As he the says stars, on the show, I'm out. Exactly. Out. There, there's no way. Those guys are so – and I think all owners, for that fact, it, I think here we've built this culture over the years of these owners are so rich and they can keep making this basically unlimited amount of money. And I think, yeah, they're they're never going to relent. They're just going to say, nope, I, there's no reason for me to do that. They don't care how – they can say what they want. They don't care how competitive – their team is if no, they're making they money. Don't. Yeah, I mean it, Donald Sterling, like, they he, yeah, Clippers right. were awful for like thirty years, and he was <laughs> just that's what. But that's what I'm saying though. Like, they, you just if you, you have the promotion. Glenn and, Taylor, my like, favorite owner ever. <laughs> God. If you have the promotion like, relegation system, yeah, there's a lot of things that would need to be overhauled, but you would eliminate that stagnation for thirty years. You know, it would force the owners to either one be ousted or two like look at the team and be like okay well um we suck right now we're not getting the money <laughs> i mean so they should be doing we have that. to be right. like even if they don't implement promotion relegation owners should still be held accountable for mediocrity or just continually that, playing terrible well and that's a thing i think needs to happen in like you said you know they should be why and this is a commissioner's job that, commissioners yeah, exactly. need to look at these teams and say okay donald sterling glenn taylor uh, 
who's the other terrible owners out there? Stan Kroenke. Stan Kroenke. I hate Stan Kroenke. Yeah. Uh, that all, guy sucks. All, all, yeah, all those guys. Like, he never goes to any of his sports team's games except for, like, the Rams. Uh, and then he just hides. Well, the Rams when they were good with his too. stupid little sunglasses. Was he ever in St. Louis? Dumb mustache. No, when he they were was like one never in St. Louis. No, and if he was, he was like in a skybox, like in like a glass room. I don't even know. He was <laughs> not around. Like, hate that guy. I mean, but that's a lot of owners because, like that's I said, true, yeah. they're they're just like, hey, how can I make some money off this? And they lie and say, like, oh, I just want to be competitive. No, you don't. And so I think that's how you look at idiots like that. And, you know, Adam Silver and, and Roger Goodell and guys like that should say, hey, listen, man, we <laughs> you got to fix something or else give them give them a time, you know, give them like seven to 10 years. Yeah. If you can't turn or if you are going on 10 years and you're and this is to you, Glenn Taylor, if you're going <laughs> on 10 years of just attack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Glenn and, Taylor's listening. It's like when the off chance Glenn Taylor like listens to this and he's like, <laughs> Who is that guy? Oh, I have He's coming after us. I We're have plenty get of stuff on the internet. Libel or something. It, oh, real oh, <laughs> Don't say that now. <laughs> go go to fan sided and oh, Dunking boy. with Wolves, my old school articles on there. Got the got the true feelings about old Glenn. Oh goodness. But hey, Glenn, if you want to come on uh, old weekendology and defend yourself, more than happy to. But, okay. So him and how about let's do this. Glenn Taylor and Stan Kroenke. Oh god. Hey. Uh, Sucks. Adam Silver and Roger Goodell tell those idiots to be like, "Hey, you got ten years. To turn this thing around." And well, or, I or give how about 10 years. how about I give Stan, him five? How years. about Stan Kroenke? Like, let's not go off whether you got to the Super Bowl. Or, let's go off like, can you fill your gigantic stadium that you claimed you could fill? Right, and you're like filling it by you know, a quarter full. Give you ten years to turn things around and create a true competitive and money-making business that's just a good brand like the patriots <laughs> and uh <Ooh. laughs> and uh yeah and if you can't do that then you're out and do like what it's coaching doesn't coach yeah. doesn't if you if you're bad for unless you're marvin lewis if you're you know you're <laughs> the continual eight and eight <laughs> just you know, 500 uh finisher hey, every hey, year. Now, he's, now he's a sun devil so i can't well, rip on him true, too much yeah. but he yeah, if you're that guy or Hugh Jackson, who's you know awful and, until you go on sixteen, and they still get a job, like and you get a parade thrown after you uh, go on sixteen. There you go. Like, <laughs> get them out. I mean, it's to me, it's not that hard to do. And I know there's there's way more that would go into it because yeah, they bought the team, but to me, it should be hey, if you're gonna buy this team, you sign this contract, and if you can't figure this out in ten yeah. years, and here's all the factors, then you're out, and then we'll get an interim guy to, to run this and and go from there so yeah i, I, I would I think be that fine with be... that i would be fine with that because it one it holds them accountable it forces them to continually be revamping their team and they can't just skate by of eh, you know we're we're crappy but uh we're still making money i'm yeah. still pocketing my couple they of can't be like ross year. perot jr yeah. who had had the mavs in the 90s and was like well it's one of my 20 businesses i own so yeah. i'm just gonna you know, collect it. You have a tax write off and collect some side cash. That's like, what I think Kroenke does right uh, now. He just does it for. Oh yeah, you, know, you don't own he's that. Bored. He yeah. owns like five teams, doesn't he? Yeah, he owns Arsenal. He owns the Nuggets. He owns the Avalanche, the Rams. Doesn't he have his son on one of those? And somewhere else. It's not like he needs the money either. <laughs> he's literally married into the Walmart family. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? What? What else is he doing? Just because he's bored, or he just wants to run clubs into the ground? No, I like, think it's it's the. I mean, I'm no like financial expert. I'm sure it's a tax write-off, and it's. I mean, I'm sure he makes some money, so it's oh, like. Oh yeah, I'm sure he does. And he, but... it's a brand, so you know he probably makes money with his other businesses by saying like, "Oh, by the way, I own this team and that team." And maybe I don't. Who knows what goes through that guy's mind? But <laughs> um, I, so yeah, I I I think it would work for the NHL and the MLB. NFL not so much. NBA would need a little, a lot of tweaking. Um, how long? How long would it take though? With all those changes that that I mentioned, like how long would they have to? Um, you think that that's would take? tough? Because I think that would take like ten years just think, to get into one of those. Yeah, things. I think you'd have to form a federation of like the like I said, the checks and balances to oversee everything first. Yeah, that's cool. That's I think yeah. they they should do that now. Like that's what yeah they should just um, for general issues keeping everybody honest i would say it, it'd probably be a quarter century to even change the mindset of these owners and the league itself and the fans too to just be like 
okay, we're thinking about doing this yeah. and then kind of moving the things in momentum because you'd have to switch the draft up, so to speak. You'd have to restructure how players are signed, how contracts are developed. You'd have to come up with the different types of revenue for each of the leagues. You'd have to rework sponsorship deals, rework you know broadcast deals as well. Uh, yeah, see, and, and, that, and that's why like, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. No. I think, I think it's a fun idea, and I think it would be – it would be cool to see, but when you throw all of that in, especially with how sports has risen in popularity every single year for 40 years, right? I, I just think that would create such a mess. And it would be so much risk just to have something cool, you know, just to have something that is working and especially like the draft that is growing and growing and growing and becoming a business of its own. It's just way too much yeah. to put on the line. And there's a million different ways that they could kind of tweak it or – do things a little bit different like you don't have to do the, uh, the three up and the three down. maybe do one up you could do one, one up or two or you know split the divisions uh get rid of just divisions in general and then just have everybody just have a free-for-all and play each other everybody plays each other and then just top 16 teams and in then the top 16 teams i think the especially the nba 100 percent needs yeah. to do that because like the east has i think my, our whole lifetime has, cool the east if, have been terrible i think it'd be cool if the nfl did that too like if yeah, there's history there other. though, because the AFC is you know yeah, is like the yeah. AFL, the old AFL teams, and yeah. I, I think it's same with the MLB. There's that history of the American League and National League, um, and they have different rules. Yeah, so, so you know, the, it would be a quite an overhaul. But the the cool one, so the Premier League does something cool. It's called Survival Sunday. So it's the last Sunday of the of the season, mm-hmm. and they have. One, they broadcast every game at the same time uh, on on that Sunday, and it's you see who goes, uh, who stays up, and who wins the league, if it comes to that, uh, and then who also really survives, and who also gets promoted too. So you got, you know, one time I had ten different screens up with like you know the twenty different teams or whatever playing, and literally seeing live like, okay, this person's just going. What up. were you watching this... those on? Ten different screens. Uh, so this is at my parents' house. So I had. Uh, parents TV, my One, laptop, two, my phone, three, my tablet, four, uh, the home computer, five. Um, I think I had, there was, I think I had like two other TVs as well. Maybe not ten screens. It was, it was as many <laughs> as a, I no, could get. Still, I'm just curious. You said the, that. I'm like, in that's the a living ton. room. That's like every piece of electronics. You have. Yeah. No, I had. I, it was literally like it was a great setup, and everything was like bang, 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 right, right there and there. And I was like. Well, this team scored, so they're going up. It's like soccer red zone, pretty like the much. NFL yeah. red zone, like but it was like, like you could see every sick. game at the same wow. time, and then like so this team would scored, so this team if they, this result remains the same, they're staying up. Oh my god, this team scored, so <laughs> you know this team's going down, or what's, it was it was madness. So I mean, how cool would it be for like the NFL to do that? It'd be like the Dolphins just beat the Patriots, they're going up, and the you know oh, Patriots I mean, are relegated. Dude, or, that would be insane. You know, for I mean, think about how sad. So, uh, as we record this, last night my Minnesota Twins just got got swept. In, I know moment of silence. Rest for, in peace. Seriously, man. But yeah. uh, hey, record record home run. But how sad would that be if not only did I have to watch my Twins just get swept and embarrassed again by the Yankees, but then you're like, oh, you're gonna go to Triple A baseball. <laughs> Dude, like I, yeah. I would be sweating. That's why a lot of fans, when they get relegated, I got, they I, are. I, I'm with you. That would be pretty. They're weeping. Cool, like, but also depressing. When uh, I think it was. That's probably why the soccer is so crazy. It over is. There. Yeah, they're insane because, like, I think it was uh, a couple years back. Um, I don't know if it was Wolverhampton or one of the teams like that where they were relegated and it. Sh- cut to a lot of their fans and they were literally weeping like the Dude. players were on the field head like in their in between their legs just like bawling <laughs> their eyes up because they knew they're like shoot we just lost the chance to stay up in the premier league for the top right many also bandwagon fans would you <laughs> see going. Dude, the bandwagon fans would be just insane if, oh i know if they got sent down with with how people how bandwagon people are now if a team got sent down, they'd be like, "Oh, I'm just gonna pick another major league team." And st- I mean, oh, see the the fans over in England though, they're so dedicated to their team. Cause, yeah, like, well, they're more historic. That's their over religion, there, though. though. Essentially, like you don't you have know? teams that were created in, like the 2000s. Yeah, do you? I mean, I don't think you do. For which the For, like the Premier League, like you don't have a you don't have like the no. There's there has, there hasn't or, been you know, any expansion the Rays or, teams. Okay, yeah, no, they've been around for years upon. So don't years you think that years. that's decades? That's another 
thing where that would be tough because like they already have that. In- I mean, that's like the Red Sox or uh, the Phillies or the White Sox. Yeah, you know, it's like baseball. Yeah, and those old timey baseball where like you're not really getting bandwagon. I mean, there are, but like true fans of those teams, you're not getting a bandwagon Red Sox fan. Like there's been there so long. A lot of times the families pass them down. You know, the fandom. You know, so I think it's it works there too because it's like, well, you're not gonna be a fan of anyone else. So and True. you're and they're in those cities where like you're passionate about your team and your city and, and that whole thing. Whereas here, you get like the Rays or the Jaguars or heck, any Florida team. Nobody really for that cares. matter. Yeah, or any LA team. So yeah, or like the the Phoenix Suns. There's teams yeah. like that where it's like the Coyotes. Like they struggle for fans. They gotta do everything possible if they got relegated then it's like okay they're done like people are totally gonna give up on them so i think that's another thing that it's it would be tough because it's like you have those teams where like the coyotes for example gary bettman wants the coyotes in the nhl because it it promotes hockey in the desert and it's really good their geographic regions they gotta hit too it's yeah it's so good for hockey in the west as bad as they've been and is like little people that show up to the games over the years and all that he keeps them there because it still helps the economy. It still promotes hockey. You have Austin Matthews now in the NHL. He even says he played hockey because of the Coyotes. So you look at just far out things like that where you relegate a team like that, sport is gone from the community. Yeah, so that's true, I, yeah. I just think, you know, for soccer in England, like that's not going to happen because that Eng- – uh, soccer is so ingrained in Europe in general. Yeah, yeah. And whereas you have some of these sports, it's not – Hockey in Dallas, that's not ingrained here. Um, you know, just a lot of sports where football even isn't ingrained in, in some of those other you know cities yeah, that it's in. People and, like the new shiny thing that comes in. Well, and, and a lot, and a lot of them too. Novelty effect for three or four years, then they're done with it. Yeah, well, and I mean, they make the Super Bowl and they go on a nice run. Carolina, you know, I, I think they got popular. I mean, it's Carolina, it is the South, but I think the Panthers got popular when they got good and when they were getting you know, the Steve Smith and, and making the, the Super Bowl runs yeah. and that sort of thing. So I think that's a big risk too that that would be really hard. Yeah, I agree. I don't know. I there's a lot of merits to it. There's a lot of a lot of challenges to it. And yeah. Essentially it boils down to It's a cool idea though. Yeah. It's, how it's, much money is it gonna make and it's probably never gonna happen just because America is pretty set in their ways and it's I think mu- if it they, makes if money they, now. So if they tiptoe going into it and follow exactly what the successful teams did, or I guess, you know, just not even the teams, the premier league, what they did and how they did it and follow that model to a T and try it. Maybe even try it in the minor leagues. Cause like try it in the minor leagues. The MLB yeah. does that with rules. They, they have all these crazy rules that they'll throw in the minors and, uh, and test to see if they work. And then, you know, I think they could do that and try it there, and then if it starts working, then bump it up. And like I said, just take a real slow approach in baseball, and then do it maybe with one team and see, and do yeah, it, do, do a trial do period a for a couple period. years, yeah, and then and then see, and you could always go back. But I think it's worth a shot later down the line. It's just, man, that's a lot of questions that they have to. No, answer. it's a lot too, and like so I said, probably in know, someone's going to be mad. Century. Someone's going to and someone's yeah. going to lose money, and that's yeah. the thing too. It's like. But it could, yeah, at the tough. end of the day, support or facilitate uh, better play overall, better management. Um, mm-hmm. You know, not have these teams being stagnated or tanking or being rested on load management. Yeah, you they know, really got to solve that problem. That's a big that's, problem uh, as well. So there's plenty of issues. Hey, NBA, stop worrying about China and yeah. stupid Daryl Morey tweets, and let's worry about tanking and that. That's ruining yeah, the product. I right agree. With that, They've so. never solved that issue. Well, That's... they have lots of work to do, so <laughs> just get us on the panel, and we'll we'll figure some things out for them. But um, this has been the Weekendology Podcast. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening to this uh, episode. Um, this was a fun episode. I like this one. Uh, yeah. A lot of great points here and there. It's so. a typical, like, bar discussion. Yeah, definitely you know, like, great. What if we did this? Yeah. And... Yeah, that's cool. what all of our topics are usually about but uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments below we want to hear from you uh, tweet us at weekendology pod on twitter uh, we're on youtube as well just search uh, weekendology podcast uh, same for itunes and spotify and uh, you can follow me at uh, william dishley on twitter and aaron where can they see if you find you at you can find me on twitter at aaron levi berg and 
hit us up on Twitter. Um, you can email us and definitely subscribe and rate five stars if you like this and leave a comment. And tell us what you think. Um, definitely, definitely a cool episode. We got some cool ones in the works uh, coming up too. So get ready if you subscribe on there. I think you'll you'll like what's coming up. Um, and I just want to. Before I go, uh, since you're last um, parting words, last parting words. Before I go, I want to give a shout out to my boy Baker Mayfield. Oh, Baker, let me just tell you, man, it's gonna get better. He had a rough game last week, uh, and you know it's it's after after this airs, you know we're gonna be looking back on this episode and saying, man, he did it. He woke up. He's feeling it's dangerous. Part better. two, and I'll, just wait, man. It's I'm, not gonna it's a dumpster fire. Just wait. But shout out Baker Mayfield. Cleveland's well, the black hole. So that's what I've been saying for years. Every player who goes there is like, oh, my God, he's going to do so much better. He's going to he's on top now. Tanks the year after. So that's just my parting words. But um, That's your shout out? That's just my shot. Shout out. No, it's really just Cleveland. a shot. Sorry to clear Cleveland. <laughs> so I don't hate Cleveland. I just don't think it's a It's just sports. a black hole that just sucks. <laughs> it's a depressing city. <laughs> well... Kind of it is. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks everybody for watching. This is the Weekendology podcast. Uh, check us out again on iTunes and Spotify. We'll be back again next week. Episodes, uh, new episodes are every Friday. So check us out, and we'll see you again later.